Okay, guys, good morning again. So this is uh, after the break, uh, we're doing Mac authentication. And obviously, as it is the course uh, this week, we are focusing on the CX platform. Now that Mac authentication means that someone connects, they will be authenticated using Mac authentication. So we look at a few things here. Um, now, in the previous module, we, we discussed .1x authentication. Remember, in terms of the weakest, if you like, link in the whole authentication chain, if you like, is the Mac authentication, because anyone can spoof that Mac and pretend to be that specific Mac. So it can be easily spoofed. It can be used in combination with other authentication methods. Something like, I'll give you an example, we can use it as a secondary form of authentication. That's option number one. Or obviously, we can use it as uh, in the guest access solution when we uh, would like to have a customer experience that is something like the user comes in, they get the capture portal, uh, they register. Next time they authenticate, they will use MAC authentication for the ease of access and for the convenience. So MAC authentication is not only tied to a specific kind of usage, use cases, uh, it can be used as a set to you as a secondary form of authentication if need be. Now, <clears throat> if you uh, have devices like printers, IoT, sensors, uh, some legacy form of devices, they might not have the capability to perform any advanced uh, so, uh, so, or sophisticated form of authentication like .1x authentication or user interface authentication like uh, this authentication, the MAC authentication would be the way to go. Now, is it possible to combine multiple authentication methods on one interface? The answer is yes. Will that work? The answer is yes. Which authentication method will be uh, tried first? So that's a question. So say, for example, we have implemented both .1x authentication as well as MAC authentication in that one, on that one port. Which one of these two methods um, will take precedence, meaning will be executed first? It depends on the platform, but when we talk about CX platform, actually it is the MAC, the .1x authentication will take precedence. So if I have two MAC and .1x authentication, it is the .1x authentication will take precedence first. Now, is that configurable parameter? It is, yes. So I can uh, decide, for example, MAC will, should take place first and then .1x authentication. So, if you say have implemented two methods of authentication on one port, one being .1x auth and the other one being a Mac auth, what happens? Say a printer comes and connects, .1x uh, doesn't have any supplicant, so .1x surely will fail. So how, what is the next step for the switch? The switch will time out. So we'll say, okay, I'm gonna wait for a certain period of time before I apply the, or try the second, MAC or the second authentication method. In this case, it's a MAC authentication. And by default, that time is 60 seconds. Is that something configurable? The answer again is yes. So we can see MAC authentication is something that we, it can be tried after certain other form of authentication. Uh, it can be on its own. Uh, and that all depends on the say, uh, on the layout and the design of your network. So let's have a look at some, um, uh, some details here, basically. <clears throat> so what we're going to do in this module, we will look at the MAC authentication and authentication scenario. It's not a long one. It's a, it's a relatively short module, but uh, we can look at a few bits and pieces. Uh, it's a very simple module. Now, for the MAC authentication, what is it? what are the possibilities? There are probably mainly two possibilities, if you like. One possibility being MAC authentication happens locally on the switch without any radius, and that's local MAC authentication, and there's no really uh, any back end connected. Um, and that, that is tedious. Uh, you can imagine, uh, you, you appreciate that if you need to do this, then you will have to do it on every single device um, in, uh, in your network. That is something that's not always desirable. But if I have my infrastructure base, uh, then I can use my radius say, um, to host all the list or the list of all MAC addresses that, uh, that are expected to connect to my network. And that's again, something that is tedious. 
I can dynamically, on the other hand, also, I don't have to, if I have clear pass, for example, I don't have to pre-populate, I don't have to pre-populate clear pass with every single Mac. So say, for example, what will happen, clear pass will glean the Mac <clears throat> from the endpoint, it sees the endpoint, and then it will glean the MAC address from, from those endpoints. So any device that is visible in my network, clear pass in, in our example, like the clear pass. Now, again, we got to, we, we're talking about clear pass policy manager being the radius server as an example. And we, this is what we are using it in, um, in this context. We'll, we'll get the MAC addresses for these devices. And maybe my policy in clear pass might say, okay, initially the MAC would be rejected. Then after the rejection, one of the actions the clear pass is going to take is, is to identify the MAC as known MAC. Next time they try to connect and authenticate, they will succeed. So we have flexibility and we have really um, a very powerful and capable kind of uh, setup that we can perform to make this MAC authentication uh, as easy as, as as seamless as possible. Okay. So as I did indicate before, we can use MAC authentication in different contexts, uh, one of which will be guest solution with MAC access. And uh, this is Mac caching, sometimes we call it Mac cache. Right. Um, Radius Mac authentication. So by default, the Radius will use the Mac address as the username and password. And uh, initially, when you connect, you will reject the traffic, obviously. You will uh, then look at the Mac address. You're going to authenticate the user based on the Mac address, Mac as a username, Mac as a password. Or you can globally set a password. You can also dictate the format of the Mac. Is it node, you know, what is it? Is it uppercase, lowercase, colon, in between them, dash or hyphens? So you have to, you can uh, basically control what is acceptable form of a MAC address that the switch will send you. And as authentication server, you will accept and authenticate. So what are options for the IE protocol for the authentication? PAP, CHAP. Right, PAP is not really the best one because that's uh, clear text. CHAP normally, if I have um, if I have a backend, then I have uh, CHAP is more secure basically. Also, but th there is also some weaknesses in the CHAP, obviously, as you can appreciate. You define what kind of uh, authentication protocol. The default behavior would be MAC as a username password. I can change that one and make a global fixed password here. The format must match if you would like to make sure the clear pass or the authentication server format is what is expected to be sent by by the switch to the clear pass for example right so in clear pass you're going to have um uh here uh, authentication based on the mac address you will have obviously it's beyond the scope of this course but on clear pass itself you will have created what's so called service or service template whatever and the service has conditions. And these conditions will um, will dictate what, and then actions, what I'm gonna do with the actions. Once uh, the user authenticates, or if the user fails authentication, what am I gonna do? So I will assign things like user Aruba, uh, Aruba user role here. Uh, some other attributes that can be sent back, something like VLAN assignment, something like quality of service, something like, uh, you know, layer two, layer three quality of service. Or well, the user role that will be um, a role that will uh, have some settings, all of them contained in that user role. Uh, to do that also on, uh, on the switch, you will have to specify who is the clear pass. That's straightforward. You will have done this anyway in any form of uh, radius authentication. So that is common between uh, .1x authentication and Mac authentication. I probably have an, uh, I will show you an example at the end of the module on clear pass and a policy on clear pass. Um, Mac authentication format, credential format, this is something that we have agreed, um, we have to agree and make sure the switch is in the same format. What protocol, PAP or MISCHAP, and a radius uh, group. Remember, the radius can be in different groups, as we have explained before and enable Mac authentication globally, and then whichever interface that needs to be authenticating the client using Mac address, also that interface should have Mac authentication enabled on that interface. Some options you can configure. 
So the previous slide was a must do. Uh, here, some options, some other options, uh, the format of the MAC address, the global password, if you would like not to use the username and password as the MAC address, just the timers, and this is when, when the re-authentication should happen. By default, is 60 seconds, and you can see all of these are in seconds. Uh, specify the radius server group. Again, that is, um, you would like to allow what kind of traffic. So what happens really in this case, um, you might want to allow certain traffic before authentication. So LLDB, CDB, for example. Uh, you might want to allow that. You might say, okay, I don't want to allow anything else um, till a user has authenticated successfully. Can I authenticate multiple clients on any interface? We said yes. So, so we said two things, basically. Can I apply multiple authentication methods? We said yes. We can do dot one x and MAC authentication. We can do, do say, for example, clear um, cat portal and, and MAC authentication. You can do cat portal dot one x authentication and so on. Okay. Now, can I authenticate multiple clients? The answer is yes. And we have seen uh, very simple examples before. So if I have typical, uh, typical uh, iPhone uh, voice over IP uh, and uh, IP based phone, and I have a client. Again, depends on the setup. There's no one way to go. But number one, you have to keep in mind, you have to increase the client limit to two. Otherwise, the switch would completely reject the client. Up to 256 client per interface. Here, as an example, we might, I say we might, use uh, the phone MAC address to authenticate the phone using MAC authentication. And I use the client dot uh, one x authentication um, capability to perform dot one x authentication on the interface. So the one interface now we can have two devices, and each one of them we're using different authentication method. Obviously, on the interface you will have applied dot one x authentication as well as MAC authentication. Now the deal here is the phone comes if if dot one x authentication would have would happen first, the phone initially will fail authentication. The client will succeed authentication. The switch will wait a timer, which is the default 60 seconds. Then the switch will try to authenticate. The, 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 the switch will try to authenticate the phone using the second authentication method. In this case, is the MAC authentication. So if there's any entry in the clear pass, you're going to see there are two entries related uh, to this phone. One has failed initially using .1x authentication, and the second will have succeeded if everything works and the setup is correctly done. And that will be two different methods for authentication, .1x initially, and secondly will be Mac. On the other hand, the client, you're going to see one entry in the clear pass. So that one entry basically will be um, uh, .1x authentication. Now, another use, in a, or use case will be um, a switch that connects to something like a hub or some form of a device that enable multiple clients to connect simultaneously. You can see now because we have increased the limit on the client uh, of the client on the interface to two, it will only authenticate two users. Those who come first to first, you know, first in first served. Okay. Um, so the first client will be authenticated assigned to VLAN 30 per our policy. Second client will be authenticated. Third will be denied. The reason for that is you're going to see exceeded the limit. The limit was two. If this limit was three, then the third would have been tried as well. And it could have been successful. It could have been, you know, unsuccessful. Now, combining dot one x authentication, and um, again, I did mention that. So that should be a problem because at the end of the day, the first method will, uh, will be tried if that doesn't work, then a timeout will be um, set as per the authentication uh, uh, configuration. And then the other method will be tried, in this case, the MAC authentication. The client will succeed, as you can see clearly in here. So you don't have to really worry much about, say, for example, um, on my edge switches, some of these ports might connect to a printer. But if I would like to be flexible, so you might be rigid, say, OK, say the first 12 ports will always be connecting to printers. So on this port, I will only apply MAC authentication. Fair enough, no problem. 
That's one way of doing it. Or I say, I don't care. Anyone can connect to any interface. And on every single one of those interfaces, I will implement both authentication methods. Dot 1x authentication first. If that doesn't work, then MAC authentication. Yes, there's a little bit extra work on the clear pass, obviously, but you know how much extra work. And that is only for initial. And maybe that is also in the time when they come early morning, the printer wakes up and they will start sending traffic and it's only for the first minute or it depends on the timer you have. But after that, that you know, there's no really difference, but that will give you flexibility of the configuration on the switch interfaces. And that will also reduce uh, the errors from the human. So you have one unified approach to every single interface. So you have, you have that flexibility if you would like to. So some guidelines for the Mac auth and .1x authentication ensure that ports are user in user-based user mode uh, for .1x, set the client limit, uh, even if the client is only one. But it, you know, the, the radius settings, uh, the policy that you have and uh, the services that you have created. Um, Mac authentication is vulnerable. Spoofing can be a possibility, obviously. Um, you know, the radius server, like uh, ClearPass, in this case, policy manager, uh, only provide authenticate for devices that require it. So they say they don't, you don't really, you make sure that your you design is efficient in, in, in very simple term. Yeah. Mac auth is the weakest link of the security system. So use it with, um, uh, with care. A client has successfully, uh, successful Mac auth sometimes might not initiate dot one x authentication. Right. Um, I've got a comment on this one also. Myself, um, spoofing for Mac is possible, but these are generic guidelines because you might implement the solution like on the CX, which is in, a, in an environment that doesn't apply or doesn't implement clear pass. If that is the case, in all, in all cases, you have to be careful. In the clear pass, we have also called device profiling capability. Even though, yes, MAC authentication is the weakest link, if you like, in the whole chain of security, but we can, we do have the capability to have more enhanced uh, visibility into the devices. If somebody spoof that MAC address, the behavior of that device, we will apply our um, deep back inspection, if you like. We will apply deep profiling capability. And based on these capabilities on clear paths, we can figure out if that Mac has been spoofed and we can block it. So we can have a more policy if this is compromised or someone is trying to behave, uh, pretend to be uh, or impersonate uh, a certain Mac address, then we will be able to figure out what is going on. Let me um, show you an example of a clear pass policy if I can do it. So I'll try it now and I will have a look at that here. So that's a clear pass example we run locally. And if you click clear pass here, you log in. So we're gonna log in. And I'll show you um, in clear pass, you will go to monitor. You're gonna find that any problems will be will appear in this area. So let me just... Um, Edit this one because that hasn't been used for uh, for some time. So I'm going to just go for this uh, one week. Okay. So we can see entries here. If anything that fails, will tell you why and so on and so forth. But my interest here is more the, on the configuration side of things. If you go to services and you'd like to perform wide dot one x authentication, obviously the same principle will be apl applicable. You click on that, and the key point in here, in our enforcement. So these are the conditions. Someone connects as a word, okay? And I made it extremely generic. So anybody can connect, and this policy will be applicable. If you look at the enforcement, this is where you are going to take actions. So simply speaking, my action was tunneling or not tunneling. This is the action that I'm going to take. So if I would like to show you these actions, basically, the rules that we have, 
If something happens, take this action. So this is what's so called enforcement profile. If I copy this and I go to the uh, profile enforcement in the enforcement profile where the action is taken, and we can search for that. Tunnel the users. What I'm going to say, if authentication was successful, send back an Aruba user role, uh, Aruba uh, attribute, which is called HPE user role. Now you can clearly see this is um, a VSA, vendor specific attribute belongs to Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Okay. And this specific one is uh, a role that will be sent back to um, a switch that is Aruba OS switch, i.e. X provision based switches. And then the, 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 the user role uh, I will send back is tunnel employee. So now this is an example of a user role. If that switch was an Aruba switch, I would have had diff different conditions in my, uh, in my policy, but also I will have different actions here. So in the actions, I will go for Aruba, and Aruba will be, um, so Aruba. So Aruba user role or Aruba VLAN or group. So I can go for this. You notice that this is different than this one, okay? And either I type it myself or I do whatever you like. This is something, a value. You can always get it from, say, let us say tunnel. Okay, so. Here, we can clearly see that we can send an action or instruct the switch to take certain action. Vendor specific attribute. This one is different, 25. This one is, look at this, is number one. Here, because these are two different vendors. If this was, say, Cisco, I would have said, in, I, I would have said Cisco, Ranger Cisco. And Cisco will have different lists of things. Maybe they have, I don't know. So let us say they have account info. They have other things, AV pair. And you give a value here, anything, okay, let's see. You can clearly see that our actions are very generic or very capable of understanding the specific type of vendor that connects to us. So this is kind of stuff that you would expect in, you know, when you, when someone sits with the, the back end or the, 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 the infrastructure in here. And obviously we will have integrated this system, the whole system, with Active Directory. So if you look at this and in the server manager, you will notice that uh, this has also joined a domain. Okay. So if this system is used in real life, then we will have investigated at the back end. So ClearPass will consult the Active Directory if the user exists or doesn't exist, and you know, multiple things. And based on the Active Directory, maybe attribute that would be sent back. I will take certain action or actions, okay? So that's just an example of clear pass and what does it do? Right, um, let's move, go, go back, move back. Um, so that's the end of this. And um, uh, then we will move to the lab. Thank you very much.